gonna do? Yeah, dollar. Or crypto bull guy. And his crypto maniacs. And the entire cryptocurrency market run wild on you. Welcome in. I am the crypto bull god and in today's video what we're going to do is we're going to take a look at a chart that no one is talking about which has significant historical importance within the bitcoin chart you can find me on twitter at crypto bull god you can also find me on youtube on trading view and on instagram at crypto bull god Please, before we get into the video, please like the video, drop a comment. I love the engagement and consider subscribing to the channel. Um, just a quick disclosure that none of what we're discussing today is financial advice. I'm looking to educate, help, and spread sound technical analysis to the community to help others in making informed decisions. The ownership falls on you, however, to make your own personal financial decisions. So let's get into it. So really what we're going to get into today is this chart and the current price action that's going on. We're going to go back to historical times and I'm very, very well going to lay out, or I meant to say in a very structured way, I'm going to lay out to you um, what this chart is telling us and why it is historically important. So this is a 12 hour chart on Bitcoin. Now there's plenty of technicians out there that cover many other charts that are significantly important to the price of Bitcoin. And I'm going to leave it up to them to continue to cover those charts and perhaps I'll hit on it, hit on some of those views such as the weekly, the two week and the monthly chart. I can consider, you know, doing a video on that. But this 12 hour chart and the significance behind it is something that no one has been looking at. And it's something that I've covered on this channel for well over a year now. So the only two lines that we're going to look at on this chart, okay, again, this is a 12 hour chart. We're going to look at the 200 simple moving average, which is this pink line right here. Okay. It's this pink line right here. And then we're also going to look at the, uh, consider the purple line, which is the 50 simple moving average right here. Now it is very common for people to refer to these moving averages when they're looking at a daily time frame. But please keep in mind, no matter if you're looking at a 12 hour chart, a one day chart, a one week chart, a one month chart, moving averages, simple moving averages in this case, uh, apply to every time frame. It's just very common for people to look at this and refer to them on a daily time frame. In this case, what we're doing is we're looking at a 12 hour time frame on Bitcoin. It's a chart that I love to look at, holds a lot of significant historical importance within the chart. You're essentially taking a daily chart, cutting the time frames in half uh, into 12 hour candlesticks. So let's just get right into things. What we're going to do specifically is we're going to take a historical view, look back on Bitcoin from 2013 to the present. And what we're going to consider is when we've gotten candle body closes, not price wicks, because price wicks are an expression of what? Volatility. So when we have gotten candle body closes below this very important 200 simple moving average on the 12 hour chart, did we see a fake out, meaning that price quickly recovered and got back above the 200 simple moving average? Or did we see what I'm calling a correction where there was sustained price movement below this 200 simple moving average for an extended period of time? Okay, so those are the two things that we're going to take a look at. Let's first take a look at the fake outs. And again, I'm using the Bitstamp exchange here. Typically, I like to use the Coinbase exchange, but the Bitstamp uh, exchange has more historical data in it. So we're going to use this exchange when looking at the information. So what I've done here for every year, I've divid divvied up the years with these horizontal gray lines. And then in, in font here within the text, I am communicating whether or not we've had a fake out, meaning that we got a candle body close on a 12 hour chart below the 200 simple moving average, but then price quickly uh, recovered above it. Okay. So it was a fake out, meaning price got below it, but at fake, we're going to get right back above it. All right. So this is 2013. As you can see, we had no fake outs. 2014, no fake outs. 2015, I'm saying no fake outs. 2016, we had one fake out. Let's zoom up and see what's zoom in and see what's going on here. So as you can see, the more we zoom in here, we uh, fell below 
the 200 simple moving average you can see on the 27th of January 2016, and we quickly recovered and got a back above it on the 14th of February. Okay, so it was about a half a month that we were below uh, the 200 simple moving average. You can see we rode that line for a little while and then continued up. So in this case, this is a head fake because again, we closed below the 200 simple moving average, but we quickly regained strength, rode the the 200 simple moving average and then continued upwards. Okay. So that was 2016. That was our first head fake. This is 2017. This was our euphoric year. Okay. This was the year that Bitcoin had its blow off top in December of 2017. As you can see, I'm denoting three fake outs. Let's zoom in and see what happened here. As you can see, candle body closed below the 200 simple moving average on the 24th of March, <laughs> right back on the 27th of March. We went right back above it, right? Here, you can see, whoop, didn't mean to move my face there. Sorry about that. You can see here, we got a close below it in July and quickly got above it two days later. And one more, you can see within two candlesticks, we made up for this. So we technically closed above it on one candlestick and then closed right back above it with massive volume in September of 2017. So that was 2017. We had three head fakes in 2017. 2018, no head fakes. 2019, no head fakes. 2020, it looks like we had a head fake. Let's zoom in here and see what happened. So in, looks like right around here on the 4th of September, we got a close below. We kind of rode it, stayed below it, got back above it, had another candle body close, but then closed right back above it. So this is this is a little wishy-washy if you wanted to actually term this a head fake, but I have from a technicality standpoint uh, term this a head fake because we did close below it, rode around the 200 simple moving average, but ultimately stayed below it a little bit. Like I said, got back above it, kind of rode the line here for a little bit and then continued onward. So 2020 had a debatable uh, fake out. And if we go to 2021, our current year, uh, we have no fake out so far. We have a current price action right here, which has yet to be told the story of in terms of if it's going to be a fake out or a correction. But so far, we have no fake outs in 2021. So one thing I want to do real quick, now that we've gotten through the fake outs, let's in a structured format here, kind of go through uh, some key conclusions that we have from these fake outs. First off, as you could see, most years did not see a fake out, right? Most years I was kind of going through the charts every year and saying we didn't have a fake out. In nine years of data from 2013 through the current year of 2021, we've only had five fake outs comprised within three years. Six years, six years of data had zero fake outs. Three years had five fake outs, okay? Um, and of those, th of those uh, five fake outs, Three of those fake outs right here was on our blow off top year of 2017. Now, the other important thing that I did want you to note, and I'm referring to the death cross here. So just as a quick refresher, a death cross simply means that that purple line, the purple 50 simple moving average, it crosses below the 200 simple moving average. And again, typically when people refer to death crosses, what they're referring to is on a daily time frame. But what you need to understand is that you can have a death cross on all sorts of different time frames. In this case, on a 12 hour time frame, if the 50 simple moving average crosses below the 200 simple moving average, that's a death cross, okay? This is a very important point that I wanna make in this video and it's, very, it's something very important to keep track of. Um, so with these five fake outs, okay, five fake outs, there was only one fake out that led to a very brief death cross, okay? And that was the one that we looked at in 2016, where the 50 went slightly below the 200 and kind of wrote it there for a little bit. The key conclusion that we should walk away with when looking at all these fake outs from all nine years is that fake outs are very uncommon. It's very uncommon on a 12 hour time frame for Bitcoin to get a candlestick that closes below the 200 simple moving average and then quickly recovers back above the 200 simple moving average. That's very rare, okay? And uh, most of these fake outs do not result in a death cross, okay? Those are the two most important things that we need to walk away with. Now, 
let's get into what I'm terming the corrections. And as a refresher, the corrections are where we, you know, we see price action like this, where we get a close below the two, a candle body close below the 200 simple moving average, and we do not quickly recover. We're down here for, we're below this 200 simple moving average for a sustained period of time. So let's go back in history. Look at all this wonderful price data we have here. Let's go back to 2013. You can see in 2013, a couple things to point out here. Um, first off, I'm saying for 2013, you can see in the screen here, we had one correction. Okay, one correction. So let's look at what that means. Well, we closed below the 200 simple moving average right here and stayed below it for a period. This is what the time bar up here is uh, signifying. The 71 days here is saying when we closed below the 200 simple moving average, we stayed below it for 71 days. Okay, so this was a, this was a correction. We were down there for a long period of time. Let's go to 2014. Okay, we see two corrections in 2014. Well, here, oh, and the other thing I should have pointed out, my apologies. The other thing I should point out here is we see the 50 simple moving average closing below the 200 simple moving average. There's a death cross that occurred there. Okay. Let's go to 2014. As denoted, we had two corrections. Okay, two corrections in 14. So here we can see candle body closed below, and we, we stayed below it for a period that's signaled down here for 100, you can see the 104 days right down here, okay? 104 days until we got a period of sustained price action above it, 104 days. The other thing to denote is, again, we see a death cross, right? That purple 50 simple moving average has crossed below the 200 simple moving average, a death cross. So 104 days, we were below this 200 simple moving average and we saw a death cross. Okay, so we got back above it and boom. Now we have a, ma this was a massive correction. So once we close below the 200 simple moving average here, 309 days, three, and you can see there's, we tried to get back above it. We temporarily got back above the 200 simple moving average here, but again, it was a fake out and we got back below here. But once we actually got sustained price movement, candle body closes above the 200 simple moving average and continued our momentum up, uh, for a period of, it looks like um, several months here, about three months, um, it took 309 days. And of course, there was a death cross here. You can see the 50 simple moving average is below the 200 simple moving average. Now let's go into 2015. You can see what this resulted in was a relatively sustained period of time above the 200 simple moving average. But again, we had another massive correction here in 2015. And in this case, once we close below here, look at all this price action that we stayed below the 200 simple moving average. This was 57 days. So a lot less of a uh, period of time relative to the 309 days and some of these other time frames over here, 104 and 71, but still we were below it for essentially two months. Okay. So for two months, we were below uh, the 200 simple moving average. And we also see that we have another death cross here, okay? A the 50 is crossing below the 200 simple moving average. So let's get into 2016. In 2016, boom, we got another correction. So here we can see, and now that you've kind of got a feel for this, I'm not gonna zoom up and go into as high a level of detail so we can kind of speed along here so this isn't a super long video. Once we closed below it, we didn't get sustained price movement above it for over two months, 68 days. We had another death cross right here. Let's get into 2017. 2017, look at this. It's beautiful. No corrections. No corrections. Keep that in mind once we get to the end here. I think that's the only year that's happened. 2018, I was here for this bad boy. We got a close below the 200 simple moving average. We saw death cross, sustained price movement. Yeah, temporarily above, but it doesn't count because it was so brief in time. We were below this for 398 motherfucking days. All right, long period of time. That was a fun time within crypto. That was the crypto winter. So we were below there at 398 days. That should sound very familiar to what we saw back here in 2014, which bled into 15, 309 days, right? So real similar there. We were below there for a really long period of time with this death cross here uh, going into 2019. So in 2019, we had one correction as denoted up here. One correction in 2019, we got price movement that really started here uh, that closed below the 200 simple moving average 
and didn't get sustained movement until the beginning of 2020, we were down below here for 132 days, below the 200 simple moving average. And again, we see a death cross. The 50 SMA is below the 200 SMA. Now, we get into 2020. Of course, everybody remembers this time period in March. Um, we did have a major correction here. And price action, once we close below here, we're, we're talking about 51 days, so just short of two months. So just short of two months in 2020, back in March 2020, we got a death cross, and we also stayed below the 200 simple moving average uh, for 51 days. So we only saw one correction in 2020. Let's get to 2021. So in the current year, there's really two things going on, okay? The first thing that's going on here is we saw... Uh, during all the saltiness back in July, or really this was back in May, you remember this dip, we had the death cross, 50 SMA below the 200 SMA on the 12 hour here. And for 79 days, so for over two months, for two and a half months, we, we had sustained price movement below the 200 SMA. Again, death cross, okay? And now the second point in time is how we started the video. This is where we're at right now. So what we're trying to decipher from all of this historical information, again, we're removing emotion from this. This isn't if you love crypto or don't like crypto. It's not what this is about. What this is about is a data science, as an analyst, okay, as an analyst. It's the same thing I do as an actuary, okay? As a data scientist, what I'm doing is I'm evaluating the historical data and bringing it to the current times to make probabilistic statements about what we could potentially see. And that's what we're gonna get into, and we're gonna get to the conclusion of this video right now. So first, before I get into sort of my high-level conclusions and thoughts regarding this, let's get into our takeaways from the corrections that we just looked at, similar to the fake outs that we looked at. Most years saw one correction, right? Remember 2017, right? 2017 was the only year we didn't see a correction where there was sustained price movement on the 12 hour below the 200 SMA. Okay. Nine years of data, nine corrections. 2014 saw the most corrections of any year. There were two corrections. Every other year outside of 2017 saw one correction. Okay. It's important to note 2021 has already seen one correction, which is the average number of corrections we've seen within a year. So really the question is, what I'm trying to answer right here is to help us to, to come up with a probabilistic statement regarding is, is what we're seeing right now a head fake or is it a correction? That's the question we're trying to answer, okay? The other important thing to, uh, other two important things to point out here in B and C, all nine corrections resulted in a death cross. Remember, if we go back to the fake outs, there were five fake outs and there was only one fake out which led to a really brief death cross. In this case, when we saw sustained price movement below the 200 SMA, every single time with these corrections, we saw a death cross, okay? Corrections averaged 141 days, about four to five months. And they spanned between 51 to 398 days. Now, let me put this in layman's terms for you. But real quick, if we remove the two largest years, right, those two really big years, the 309 days and the 398 days, where we saw sustained price movement below the 200 SMA, really what we're talking about in this line in here is we average about three months, 88 days. So if we remove those two super long bear markets, we had what we're trying to say here is, what we saw on average removing those two outlier years, because those two years, the reason I'm calling them outliers is because the sustained price movement below the 200 SMA was much larger than we saw in any other year. So if we remove those two real high numbers and look at the average of the other seven corrections, right? There were nine in total, we removed two of the corrections. So if we look at the average of those seven corrections, we're talking about three months. Three months we saw price action below the 200 SMA before we could punch back above it, okay? So the key conclusion that I'm reaching from these corrections, and you should be as well, corrections imply that price stays below the 200 simple moving average on average for three months. Again, removing those two outlier years. And 2021 has already experienced the average number of corrections we have typically seen in a year. 
So now we're getting to the fun part. This is taking everything we've just talked about, looking at the fake outs, looking at the corrections, bringing it all together, and just letting the numbers do the work for us to lead us in the most probable, probable direction of where we're going. So in summary, let's go to point one. We have seen candle body closes below the 200 SMA 14 times. Remember, there were five fake outs. Five times we got below it and back above it real quick. Nine times we got below it and we stayed below it for an extended period. So 14 times in total. So what does this mean? Well, this implies there is a greater probability that what we're seeing today and when we see candle body closes below the 200 SMA, there's a greater probability that it is a correction. It's not a fake out. It's just the numbers. Look, I do the math right here for you. Nine out of 14 times, nine corrections out of 14 total occurrences gives us a 64% probability that when this occurrence occurs, when a candle body closes below the 200 SMA, history tells us 64% of the time, it's going to be a correction, okay? Only 36% of the time will it be a fake out. The second conclusion here that we can reach in summary is fake outs are very uncommon, very uncommon. Anytime we've seen a candle body close below the 200 SMA, um, nine out of 14 times, it's resulted in a correction. Only five times, and by the way, the thing I'm pointing out here is Three of the five fake outs all occurred within that massive euphoric year of 2017. So if we remove that one year, there were only two fake outs, okay, and, and, and nine corrections, okay? So the numbers are not in our favor to have a fake out. And the third extremely important thing to communicate here is that if we see a death cross, it is most likely a correction, okay? 14 total times, again, we've seen candle body closes below the 200 SMA. And we're trying to answer, is it fake out or is it a correction, right? So 14 total times. So what does this really imply? What this implies is pointed out here. Of the 14 occurrences, we saw 10 death crosses. One of those death crosses was a fake out. So what this means is that when we see a death cross from a historical perspective, historically speaking, there is a 90% probability that it's going to result in a correction. So when we go back to this chart, if we, and it's curling down, this 50 SMA is curling down pretty hard towards this 200 SMA. If this thing crosses below the 200 simple moving average, right now the 50 is at 58,000 and the 200 simple moving average is at 54,000, we'll call it 500, okay? If this crosses below the 200 simple moving average, History says there's a 90% probability that this will result in a sustained, uh, sustained price action below this 200 simple moving average. It's going to be a correction and not a fake out. So unfortunately, if you're a bull, what the 12 hour time frame right now is telling us is that it is more likely that what we're seeing right now, if you followed everything I just told you, it's more likely that we're going to see a correction. That's what's more likely. Now, am I telling you, and again, some of us are more analytically minded than others, so I want to be very clear here. Is the crypto bull god telling you that we are definitely seeing a correction? No, that's not what I'm telling you. There are no certainties. It's why I got so pissed off at Data Dash, whether he ends up being correct or not from a couple weeks ago when he made the statement that he was 100% certain on something. No one is 100% certain on something. I am not 100% certain on something. What I do is I take the data, I take the historical data, and I make probabilistic statements regarding future price action, right? I'm using education, I'm using numbers, I'm, I'm taking all these values and computing things to tell me the most likely and least likely direction of price. Is it most likely, based on what we just walked away with today, that what we will see, okay, based on this summary, sustained price action, okay, below this level for around three months, if we remove the two outlier years, around 54,000, we'll call it 500. Because the 200 simple moving average is going to flatten out around 54,000. Is it most likely 
that we will see sustained price action below 54,000. Yes, it's most likely. Is it a certainty? No, we could see a fake out. I'm just telling you that more than likely, the numbers are just telling us this 12 hour chart with the 200 simple moving average and the 50 simple moving average that we could see, see sustained price movements below the 54,000 area for around three months. So again, take this analysis and add it to the other analyses that others are doing within the community. There's, and if you're paying attention to me on Twitter, look, don't tune off just yet. Listen to what I have to say here. If you are paying attention to content and the content creators that I retweet out there, you should know whose opinions I value. And you should take their data points and my data points and formulate your own conclusions, okay? This is one data point, all right? Telling me everything that I've communicated to you. And I've shared with you the most probabilistic, likely price action of, of where things are going. So I hope you found this information very helpful. Um, and if you did, please like the video, drop a comment, subscribe to the channel, spread this stuff throughout the community. I mean, I do not have a large following, especially on YouTube. My Twitter content uh, has been growing, so thank you very much for that. I do not have a lot of people on YouTube, so get my information out there if you value it. I'd really appreciate it. Um, so until next time, spread awareness and carry the education forward.